In other cities like San Francisco and New York, bus ridership is significantly down as a result of Uber and Lyft, which means that the transportation system's ability to move people is declining in New York and San Francisco. In Seattle, it's growing, but only because the city stepped up its leadership to get transit to deliver a quality product, because it's the city that owns transit's operating environment. The city controls the street, it controls all the traffic signals, and Seattle said, uh, yeah, our current method of measuring success in our transportation system uh, is about the movement of vehicles, which means that a person on board a 40-passenger bus is valued at 1 40th the value of somebody driving alone in a car. And people on foot or on bike, it's not that they don't matter, it's that they only matter insofar as they get in the way of the free flow of traffic. This is our primary way of measuring mobility success in every single city in the United States. It's called intersection level of service. Seattle has shifted <coughs> towards looking not at vehicle movement, but at person movement, so that it can give priority to the most space efficient modes of transportation, particularly walking, biking, and public transit. The result of that, transit faster, frequent, more frequent, more reliable. The result of that is people are taking it in droves because we value our time. So um, how does that work in, say, a city like DC, where you have a broad metropolitan area, uh, lots of folks commuting into downtown areas, um, and there's a lot of sort of competition for space on the road, um, you know, but both between drivers, but also between drivers and cyclists, drivers and pedestrians. How does that work in a, a city like this? So all public transit agencies have a structural flaw in that they don't control their operating environment, and many of them are unclear about why they exist. So correcting for that flaw requires a partnership between the municipalities and the public transit agency, where there's a deal that's struck that says, all right, city, I control the streets and the signals. <clears throat> if I give you better travel time, if I can make your buses faster, I need you to invest that savings into improved frequency and improved reliability, right? If cities and transit agencies operate together, uh, not only can they improve transit, but they can be much better partners for companies like Lyft and Ford as they're creating new technologies to do the things that transit's not good at. So, you know, Lyft and autonomous vehicles are great at making first and last mile connections, getting from the bus stop to your destination, serving places that are of lower density that can't really be served uh, with larger vehicles. Um, they're great at operating services off hours. They're not great at primary commute service because they're space inefficient, particularly compared to buses or, or subways. So if cities get into the driver's seat and figure out the right roles for each of these different transportation technologies, then we can really experience the benefit. But if we turn over the public right-of-way to private profit, then the public loses. Jessica, would you agree with, with that? So I think what Jeff calls out, which is really important here, is the, the right option for the right trip. Um, and certainly, I think, I mean, even if you look on the street out here um, right now, uh, there is a, a crush of uh, desire to, to be in the cities that we love and call home. But that crush comes with cars and congestion and delivery vehicles blocking the road because our consumer behavior has shifted and we're ordering so much stuff online now, right? Um, and so I think there will be broader discussions about when and how and where um, the right vehicle is the right choice. Um, from a consumer side, um, we see a world where there's much more fluidity across all of these, um, these choices. Uh, and that's only enabled by public transit um, and, again, the private sector working together. But I think it's important also to talk about the, the context here, which is the city itself, right? And the demographers tell us that, you know, in the not-too-distant future, something like 70% of the world will live in cities. And so for us at Ford, that's why it's so important to have these conversations with leaders at the city level is because these are the places where the decisions are going to be made that have true impact 
on uh, transportation systems globally. Mm -hmm. And if uh, we don't have that discussion, we'll just continue to see um, roads being blocked and people not being able to move. Roger.